G'day listeners, this episode is proudly brought to you by our sponsors, supshq.com.au. Use BWB15 at checkout to receive 15% off and direct shipping. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and all of you in between, to another episode of Bros with Brains here with myself, Mr. Aaron Scarfi, and from Queensland, Mr. Benjamin Button Mayfield Smith. I think by now, you think of like 80 episodes in there, figured out that when you're talking, it's you. They, they know it's Aaron, maybe. You never know. We could be a, this new listeners. These that's, things that's happen. Right. That's we need, to, that's need to cater to the audience. Guys, if, you, if you're a new listener, go back to episode one, start again, fully subscribe, and yeah, yourself and, bitch. And, did we even do like good in? I don't even think we did good intros back then, but anyway. I don't know. It feels like so uh, long. It was so long ago. Revolved Eight, as people, as men. Like 80, 80, <laughs> week, 80 weeks or so. I don't even know how we've been doing this for too long. That's a natty prep, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. It's only it's only halfway through. <laughs> uh, what are you looking at? What episode we're up to? No, nah, I'm pretty sure this is episode eighty, to be honest. Yeah, fuck. Uh, let's have a look. I'm pretty sure. Uh, where's this? Wait, that's basically a yeah. fucking series episode, of Netflix. Episode 80. Yeah, it's the longest running season of anything. <laughs> yeah, that hasn't been cancelled or fucking removed after a week. Yes. <laughs> oh, we got great reviews. Let's remove it and put something woke up instead. 100% because that's what the cool kids do. Yeah, that's how you make money. You remove password yeah. sharing and then you also take away the content that's working. 100%. Why did my fucking shares poor fucking portion dive? Shut up, dickheads. Yeah, market much. share. That's what I was going to call market share. Fuck's sake, my market share. Why my market share dive? Anyway, what's going on? Not much, man. Same shit, different day. Train, work, eat, sleep. You know how it is. All the fun shit. All the yeah. stuff I love. Training's been good. Got calories, got cut like a motherfucker, which is always fun. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Like, yeah, well, it's kind of I've I've been asking for it to be honest, so I can't really complain. But um, yeah, it's been good. Been actually we've got three rounds in three days of golf, which is nice. Oh, it must be nice. <laughs> it's pretty damn nice. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've been getting up fucking early to go play, and then <laughs> early, and then earlier to train. So it's like train and then go play golf is just not fun. I'm like, I wonder why my back or like I'm feeling a bit stiff. I'm like, oh yeah, because I've done twenty thousand steps three days in a row and played golf and then also trained beforehand, which is awesome. That will, that will do it. Yeah, but I mean, it's been good. I had a couple of good training sessions, which is nice. Legs felt... I, I got to the point, I don't know how, my legs were so pumped this morning that I struggled to do my second set of the exercise because they were so on such a pump. It was fucked. Nice. I haven't had that in forever. I haven't had that in since I had insulin in, and like those were the days. Like, <laughs> I haven't even got... Yeah. You know, like Anyone that knows, like, you know, if you have an insulin pump, like you're in fucking pain, but yeah. I had that same blow up and pain without insulin. And then I'm like, do I have diabetes? <laughs> <laughs> like my blood glucose has, is ten. <laughs> yeah, like has something fucked up on me right now. But no, I was just like, holy shit, this is awesome and painful all at the same time. It's almost like it? I wrote a post about it, and it was your training intensity. Yeah, well, I contemplated if I needed to do the second set. I was like. I nearly, I nearly turned around and didn't do the second set because I was that blown up and in that much pain. I'm like, this isn't good. <laughs> like, this ain't right. So I went and did. So I actually went, did another exercise, like started my next exercise, did a set, and came back to it to finish because I'm like, I need the extra rest in between because my legs were just blown up. <laughs> <laughs> I need to deflate for a minute, let it back off. Yeah, yeah, they were just fucking blown up, man. I put the po- I put the actual photo on Instagram. People were like, that's fucked. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. nice. Yeah, like it's it, it's good. I enjoy it. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, it's a sadistic level of fun. We enjoy it. Yeah, it's good times. Yeah, exactly. Just, this is my version of fun. Feeling your legs like you could just hit them with a pin and then pop. Yeah, like it, it was at the point where it's like you know when they're so full of blood, like they, they're either gonna pop or they just feel rock hard. They yeah. were rock. They were rocks. I was like, yeah, uh, that's not good. <laughs> like sometimes you do like that when you train, like when you train legs are fucking hard. You do like the Jay the Jay Cutler wobble. You'll, you'll get yeah. like a you'll get like a ripple wobble when it's yeah. like blood pumping, like insulin pumps, and you got to do it. It's just solid mass just moving. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, uh, oh. the, the thing I think that really set it up was. I had to change my exercise order purely because someone was on the machine and I was like, okay, yeah. so usually I do like the, I do the, I've got a 90 degree leg press in my program. So 
I'd usually do that first and then move to leg extensions. But because someone was on the 90 degree, I'm like, I'll do leg extensions first. Yeah. Bad idea. <laughs> Very bad idea. Today. I, I, the- I, and I had thought about it beforehand. I'm like, I know me, I'm going to push these leg extensions to death because I have way more energy to do them right now. So I completely did that as a, you know, idiot that I am and then decided mm-hmm. to, to get on the, the leg press. And I'm like, oh no, I'm in trouble here. We're, 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 yeah, this is not fun. I do that for clients when, uh, like, if they're if they're not quite feeling their hamstrings or they're not quite uh, like they you know might have back pain or like slight, slight niggles in them in their hinging, um, but I still want them to execute an RDL. I'll get them to like a Nordic curl first. Yeah. And like, oh, this doesn't look like it's gonna be much work. I'm like, oh, shut up. Do the Nordic yeah. curls first. Let's see you do two sets of twenty, and then we'll see how much you do on your RDLs. I guarantee you, it's not much, and you're shaking every single yeah. time. Holy fuck, what is this? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. It's almost 100%. like we exercise selection order for a specific reason and we get the benefits out of it. 100%. I mean, who would have thought? I mean, <laughs> we did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we did. <laughs> it's like when people are like, oh, I didn't know this. I'm like, but I did. That's yeah. why I put it there for you. <laughs> <laughs> Ask the question and I'll give you the answer, but I did. That's why it yeah. happened. It's like, blah, blah, blah. blah. No, 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 no. I've done this before. <laughs> yeah. When I, when, I get, when I get like a, one of my girls like, not blow up weight after a period or like they maybe came like you know the the weight increase was slightly faster than usual i'm like hey yeah, let's give it two weeks let's see what happens and then straight away come straight back down like yeah no yeah I'm like it's like you, yeah. you were going through your bloat phase and then you held water and then you bled out and then also your weight came back down as you went back into the next phase this is how it works I'm like yeah. oh but this usually happens i'm like yeah but no that was, yeah. that was, that's what it used to do this is what it does now <laughs> that was pre bed yeah. This is before this is, we work together. This is post bed. Yeah. <laughs> this is the new you. You're yeah. welcome. You're welcome. Turns out you don't and like even like the message you get was like, oh my my periods are nowhere near as painful and blah blah and this is happening. I'm nowhere near as bloated. I don't feel as disgusting. Like, yeah, yeah. So when you actually have good amounts of a mixture of insoluble, soluble fiber and digestion works and liver metabolism kicks in, we know what's happening. You're actually breaking down estrogen properly. It doesn't have to be as painful. I can't tell you about the pain, but I can, yeah. I can tell you that this makes sense. I can, tell, I can tell you theoretically about, about yeah. the pain. Yeah. <laughs> That's so always... I can mansplain to you what the data yeah. is. Like. Yeah. <laughs> and then I you're going to be put, yeah, and you're going to be put on and put in much more pain that you don't need. Exactly. I was like, it's, it's, weird. it's weird. It's like it's like we kind of knew this, but uh, that's why you came here, isn't it? Yes. To ask us for assistance because that's what we do for our living. Correct. Correct though. But anyway, how is sunny, wet Brisbane? Man, it's actually good this morning. I got up. I'm like coming on the back end of this back inflammation, which is good. So um, deloaded last week and just sort of went through uh, more of the accessory leg work and then I'll put them back in this week. Um, but um, got up this morning, got about 30 minutes of sunlight, had a coffee, got uh, some posing, uh, sorry, some stretching, some mobility work done, got the glutes triggered uh, up on the roof. So that was good. Got that going. Um, yeah, ended up, uh, ended up seeing big David Goggins on Monday. That was fucking pretty unreal. Won't yeah. lie. The rest of the event was pretty trash, like listening to people um, over market and sell themselves. And they just say, you were not selling anything today, but also for this one time offer, you can get this on my bra. Yeah, because it wasn't like, just him, was it? No, no, no. So it was like a, it was like a, an event, like a. I, I kind of didn't realize when I got the ticket, it was off a client that couldn't make it, and I was like, David Goggins sold. I'll pay that. Um, then there was all this extra stuff with it. And I was like, oh, it actually sounds like yeah. a bit decent. Read some reviews, got there, and it was honestly just a fucking six hour like sales pitch and yeah. just dumb shit where they're just like, um, you know, for this much money, I can rejig your entire interest rate and mortgage structure and have you pay off your house in seven years if you buy this. And he's like, but I'm not selling you anything. I'm giving you free info, but also. For today only, it's two grand instead of four. And I was like, he's, he's pulled his number out of his ass. He's like, this is going by, you know, the average house has this 6% interest rate on their mortgage and this and this. And I'm like, brother, I don't know when you start looking at numbers, but I do not have a 6% interest rate on my mortgage. So I don't know who you're selling to here. And <laughs> yeah, then, like in what world? <laughs> yeah, when, when did this happen? And how did you not have people refinancing during COVID? Um, yeah. And then there was like, you know, other, other guys like going through like, so a big thing that I was going to ramble on in my stories, but it was also not worth it. But at the same time, it kind of is. So there's this new thing out coming out called like, uh, not a new thing called neuroscience, but there's a new thing term coming out called neuromarketing. Basically <laughs> neuro, like, neuro, neuroscience. It's a new well, thing. Neuroscience is a new science. We look at the scale of science <laughs> durations. Be, be, but, been around, been around. Let's be real. It's been around. Yeah. <laughs> Back when Phineas Gage lost his prefrontal lobe. Um, yeah. But 
they have this term now called neuromarketing, right? And the concept is basically they use digital analysis and digital media and like embedded cameras and pixelations in like marketing positions to try and assess or in, in like clinical labs. And again, it's another case of where the lab is not the gym or the real world. They'll try and use a lab where, and they'll gauge, you know, certain systems or certain parts of the, of the screen or the image or the picture or the book or the video. And they'll try and see what draws someone's attention, how long they look for, what they're looking at. They'll then attach like EEGs or stuff to them and try and get the So EEGs, your electroencephalogram. Uh, we're mm -hmm. looking for brain scans, our brain uh, neural interactions at this point, what's spiking and what's reacting. Um, and they're trying to cross-correlate the reactions and the parts of the brain that are active versus the image that you see. Now, we know that for short to long-term memory conversion, there has to be a, a place called a, a system called encoding. There is a process amongst memory retention called encoding, and it mm -hmm. has to be generally the most efficient way to do it is the deeper you can associate the image, the deeper that you can connect to that, that image and retain it. So you have like emotional encoding is kind of like the biggest trump. So if you can get a deep connection or a subjective retention to the image, you generally convert it. And then obviously uh, reiteration or re replay of the concept will also ingrain it further. So when we go through a filtration process, the brain goes, hey, what's useful to us? We've used this about 100 times. Okay, we should probably retain that. We'll keep that and store that for later. Now, these kinds are trying to claim that through their analysis of neuromarketing, um, this, these companies they work for, they figured out the best ways to, um, to push products and know exactly what to look for in social media and what ads run the best. And uh, basically it was like, uh, organic content is dead and you should only pay for ads for marketing. That is how you do it, how you run your funnel. This is what you do. And I was just sitting there just screenshotting stuff and just sending it to Brooklyn. I'm like, I know that this is dumb because neuromarketing is not enough of a fixed concept yet to make such conclusive statements and be like, we know exactly where clients will look. No, you don't. You're like, because they'll, they'll use like, for an example, they use camera light marketing. So like you'll have like a, you always notice that a, a larger like signage will be at a set of lights. They have cameras inside of those will try and pick up uh, like eye contact. So someone's looked at them. Now the difference is they're trying to use that to state that, you know, cars drive past this many times and we see the same person. They're picking up uh, pedestrian data. They're picking up uh, your, your driver versus your passenger. Those are very different things. A passenger is looking around the world. A driver is fixed and fucking focused on the attention of the car in front of him, not dying. That's kind of like the point of what a driver is doing. You would get to A to B with, you know, arriving there. <laughs> and they're like, hey, by the way, this is how neuromarketing works. And we know for a fact, we worked at this and I worked at this company called fucking NeuroEdge or whatever it's called. And we studied the leading edge of neuromarketing. Looked it up, like five seconds, looked up this guy. He was there for six months. He's like, I yeah. was a, I was a teacher at the University of Melbourne on neuromarketing and digital media. He was there for as a, as a tutor. He was a tutor. So he's a student teacher. He's a, a student tutor, teacher. Yeah, student yeah. teacher, yeah. So that's what he was there as. Uh, he didn't lecture there or teach there. He was a tutor. Um, and then from that, he was like, yeah, I worked at this company, blah, 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 deal of shit. And I was just like, like looking at this stuff, the scary part to me was... <laughs> This is, how, this is how like sadly gullible people are and desperate for answers, right? Instead of just like, you know, being rational and critical, getting not getting in hype. Um, he was like, never, never sell, like never cut your price or decrease your value because to the five type, the four types of purchase of buyers or customers, um, the, the one you're trying to grab, which is like your, your more complex customer, your like your financially secure customer there, like mm. a, a the, yeah, yeah, know, yeah. the more expensive, okay, the better the so, client. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. The one that's actually um, got money. Exactly. And he's like, if you cut your price, then the ones who are that customer won't buy it. End of the fucking event. He goes, for today only, my $40,000 product, five grand. Yeah, of like, course. Brother, of course. It's a market. You, yeah. you can a... cut nearly a thousand percent in total price mm. yeah. and think that no one's going to bat an eyelid. Yeah. Sadly, I was wrong. The number of yeah, every, everyone jumped in. Every, yeah, everyone I was like, you like, dumb motherfuckers. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very common thing in coaching, business coaching. And, um, from what I've seen coming across all the different business coaches I've interacted with and sort of inquired with and looked at their strategy more than anything. And like, how are you going to make me more money or help me make money? And it's kind of like, well, they've, they've all got the same thing. It's like, you have, you know, your high end ticket offer, whatever it is. And yeah, then, then what are you willing to sell it for? And it's kind yeah. of like, this is your ideal price. And then this is your, you know, shit price. And you're like, yeah, fucking really like so you this is what the value is actually worth but you're just trying yeah. to overcharge so you're being a dick yes so instead just charge what it's worth yes promote it as that and if people buy it they buy it and if they don't they don't fucking so be it let market dictate the value of your product <laughs> anyway so i imagine brooklyn went there she would have had a heart attack no she didn't go she um I was i'm just, saying I was imagine just, if she, oh, yeah 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 she she would have a good day <laughs>
Um, she, yeah, she would have had a heart attack. She would have killed the, everyone. Would have been the hilarious. thing that immediately put me on the step back was that this guy used his childhood to say that he'd studied behavioral science. Yeah, nah, fuck off. I was like, yeah, we're done. <laughs> I'm going. Home. <laughs> I left it. I left it. So like, they locked. They locked the fucking doors, right? So they shut the doors. They're like, all right, presentation started. They shut the doors. Like, yep, sorry, guys. Like, uh, shut the doors. No one leaves while I'm speaking. I was like, bruh, if you have to trap people in the fucking audience. That's yeah, that's, well, yeah, it's kind of like when, you know, you have these events where they're like, oh, you can't take your phone out. It's like, uh, okay. You're like, you're going to do something that we haven't seen before, which I'm sure we have, but whatever. Yeah. So yeah they're going to lock the doors on you, but okay. Pretty much from there, I was like, okay, this is fucking trash. Left that because I'm like, I saw the next guys, looked them up and straight away. It was like, basically like, Put it this way, if you're a digital marketer, you're a financial advisor, and you're talking at, at a marketing event, and your social media presence is like 100 followers or like 1,000 yeah. followers. Yeah, like, don't, uh, don't start talking about social media. I could probably teach you at this point. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's what you're doing. Um, and so I was just like, all right, cool. I left that at like, I think I got out at 11. Because the first talker was Ned Brockman, the guy who ran from Perth to Sydney. Like, that was pretty cool. Um you could definitely tell the hype's got to him a bit. Like, it's like, you know, yeah, he's got a cool story to tell. He ran really far, yada, yada. I get that because mm-hmm. David Goggins also there. Good shit. Raised some money. Fantastic. But, like, but there's there's not much in that that you have to teach me that David Goggins hasn't already taught me. Or, yeah. Or like, well, yeah. What are they going to offer that he yeah. isn't or something along those exactly. lines? Exactly. But... So I was like, it's not really a different thing. It's like a, a but... less. I, I get he was an idol and that sort of shit. It's a cool story. But I was like, yeah. well, like, I do. I do wonder if they're just there to reinforce more than. I, I honestly think it's just like it, another like grab Aussie hype, get the appeal of a yeah. local guy. Yeah. Yeah. We've got this like draw him in. Cool. Um, I was like, I was like, cool. It was a good story. Listen to him. Like the thing that got me most across the day was that it was people saying stuff that I'd already heard. Like they were just saying a lot of stuff I already knew. So I was like, cool. I'm just coming back for Goggins. Left, did client check-ins, came back at four o'clock, listened to Goggins, uh, got to shake his hand, got a photo with him. I was like, fuck, what do I say to a man who's inspired me this much in a minute? I was like, I got around there, literally all I could say was like, <laughs> I appreciate you, man. Like, yeah, fucking thanks. Like, I got there and no words came out of my mouth. Yeah. I just <laughs> I got, I, I, blah, 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 blah. The, thing, the thing to me was like, yeah, fucking lie, lie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> but like, the thing that got me right was, I went in there, like, it's pretty, it was meant to be a pretty big, big event. Like, you go in there, represent your business and network and connect and chat, whatever. And I was probably one of five people I could see wearing a button down slacks and dress shorts, a dress pants, a dress shoes. And I got like, even in the platinum lineup of people, people just wearing like trainers and like fit shorts and gym gear and like singlets or shirts. I'm like, I mean, David fucking Goggins. There's someone, this person someone who like inspires part of my life and has affected how I run my business. I'm probably not going to rock up there half ass and look like a bag of shit. I got around the corner and he's just straight up like, man, you're looking sharp, brother. And I was like, thanks, man. <laughs> I feel validated. Well, I feel like that's what, I feel like that's one of two things. It's funny. It's like, I've, I've been to events where I've done both. Yeah. It's kind of like, I, I don't know. Like, I don't feel usually comfortable in like slacks. Yeah. Shirts. Yes. Like, Neither do I. Uh, yeah. yeah like, I don't feel, so it's like, if I'm going to go to something, if I have the option to be comfortable, I'm going to be well, fucking comfortable. You I know sort of said I mean? like, look, if I look at the gen, gen, uh, 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 general but entry, yeah, but I mean, when I say comfortable to an event like that, I don't mean like trackies. I mean, you can just put on jeans and a polo top. Yeah, like that, that's comfortable. Right. And it's like, at yeah. least you look you look neat. It's semi-formal. You look pre- yeah, you look presentable. Yeah. It's like neat it's casual. Like, <laughs> a general audience, like the general audience, like fair enough. You're not meeting him or like getting up face to face with anyone. It's just kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. fair enough. Throw on some fucking shorts and some nice shoes or something like that. But like if you're in line to meet him, like of all the things that I respect about this guy, it's like, you know, it's his discipline, it's his routine, his structure. I can rock up to this dressed up to meet david goggins i can meet up dressed to like you know i was kind of talking about the client the other day is i set the standard for myself in the environment that i'm in so if yeah. i'm going to uni and i'm going to be at uni I, I dress to be student ben if i'm yeah. in the office you know i'm wearing my polo it's not a button down but it's a polo where i'm, I'm always wearing shoes even tom was like why the fuck do you wear shoes in your office i'm like because it tells me i'm working like yeah. i'm in the environment yeah, you, you said yeah yeah you're setting your routine you're setting your standards exactly. That's fair. i so get my, that for me for this for like to meet a cat like goggins I'm dressing the part of what I expect of myself to meet Goggins. Yeah. I'm like, how can I ever be like, you know, cause there's, there's always like the, the cliche Q and A's at the end where it's like, Hey David, I'm going to be up there speaking with you one day yeah. and I'm going to do this with you. And he's yeah, like, yeah. Right, he's like, yeah. like you, you don't look like you're carrying yourself. Like that's what you're going to do. Yeah. hundred percent. Make this happen. And I was yeah. like, I, I can well, go say to this guy that you've impacted yeah. my business. And- it's like the, it's like the saying, fake it till you make it. And like some of the things you can't control when you fake it is like the way you look like, yeah, 100%. yeah, you, yeah you, you, you can put on something nice and you can tell people like i do this and yeah nine times out of ten they're gonna they're gonna believe you 
if you can, if you're going to stand up in front of two and a half thousand people and tell David Goggins you're going to be up there one day talking with him, yeah. and he says to you when and how, what does it look like? To, like tell yeah. me the details, and you just yeah. like freeze up while you're wearing a bag of shit clothes. Yeah. That to me just says like you've never actually thought this out. This is not an yeah. actual dream. This is just like I'm going to tell David I want to be like him. Like you're wasting <laughs> everyone's time. Shut up. Yeah, I want to grow up and be like you one day. Yeah, but I mean, like, yeah, just the fucking yeah. To me, like, there's a, there's a photo I can get access to. I think um, I've got to go find that probably today. Actually, put that in my notes. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it's just just like a just a fucking unreal. He's one of my he's my my part of my Mount Rushmore of mindset influences. So yeah. I've got a signed copy of Tim Grover's book. I've got a signed copy of David Goggins' book. I've yeah. now got a signed copy of Jordan Peterson's and a signed copy of Jocko's. Yeah, nice. Jocko is the only one out of those guys for me, I think. But anyway, that's just because of the military slash MMA background. Um, well, I mean, Goggins also from the military. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't do Maybe MMA. Steel and uh, Ranger and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> does does interest me? Does interest? Me. It's been done before. Like, do something new. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, kid, I'm, kid, I'm, kid, I'm kidding. I, I don't, I don't follow much. You know me. I don't follow I these guys. I like, nah. I know. I let you do it, and then I just pick your brain. Yeah, um, that's it. Um, but yeah, like those fucking. It was mad. It was, a, it was just a, a good start of the week, get it all going. Um, big news is that we have the app coming out. So we uh, that was kind of like my announcement for, I think it was last week or maybe for the month ahead. I don't know. Yeah, we can't remember. We I, did have an announcement I, at some point, but yes. I knew I was going to say it, um, but the app is in the final stage of development. So it's done. We are just uploading content and then we're going to sit down with the developers and kind of walk through how that content got uploaded. So you just kind of got like some preset pieces of our stuff that we can load into it. Yeah. Um and basically from there Matter HQ is born and it's fucking good to go and we start to onboard clients through it and I'll just probably spend the first few weeks before I go back to uni mapping it out playing with it yeah. and make sure it's good to go. Um, yeah, it's fucking talking know, it's about crazy. the app or your penis. Yeah. Um, Pork, you know that does. <laughs> just the way it came out could have been anything. Could have been up to you. Yeah, so I mean, that's getting better. Business is good. Life is good. Motivated, I'm excited. Shit's happening. Can't complain. Not really. No. No. I mean, I will, but I can't. Oh, and that's what this podcast is for to complain. That's the whole point. Yes, correct. Yes. It's educated complaining. 100%. <laughs> it's like, what do we see in the industry and what's pissed us off, which is always fun. Yes. We, should just, we should just change the title. What pisses us off. But anyway. <laughs> so, Convo Client Loyalty. Oh, yes. Oh, this this is, a few people. This, is, this is always a fun one. It's like, yeah. it, 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 there's an interesting, there's always, as we know, there's always two sides to the story, right? Absolutely. Or two sides to any coin, unless you have a double-headed coin. Um, you know, as a client, it's like, if you've gone to a coach mm-hmm. with a particular goal, mm-hmm. and the coach has mapped out everything for you, explained it, done, you know, everything that the coaches should do, right? Mm-hmm. And then your ego gets in the way or you think you know better. Mm-hmm. Why the fuck did you go to a coach in the first place? Correct. Is my question. Now, for the listeners, this isn't me. Like, I'm fortunate. My guys that come to me are pretty good. And then anyone that sort of exhibits that, I actually get rid of them pretty quick because yeah. I have no time to work with people that come to me, try to pick my brain or whatever it is, and then think that they know better and want to start doing their own shit. I just tell them, literally to go fuck themselves because i have zero tolerance for it it's kind of like you know yeah like you've come to me for a reason like if you don't like it then get out i don't care um but (laughs) it's just someone that i happen to know you know power this is obviously in powerlifting because powerlifters are stupid as we know again some of you are good most of you aren't but that's fine (laughs) caleb fuck Um, you (laughs) yeah it's like see some of you are cool most of you really aren't but that's fine um no (laughs) it's like this person has been had been training with another very popular powerlifter, right? Mm-hmm. In, interstate. And this powerlifter sort of mentioned that the program is too much volume. Now mm-hmm. it's three by three. Six what? weeks out. Yeah, six weeks out, three by three is too much volume, apparently, for six weeks out. I'm like, what? Like, excuse me. <laughs> you should do ones and that's it. Yeah, uh, excuse me. In what world is nine reps too much volume? <laughs> Bro, that's inflammation and fatigue. You're fucked. Like, that's not even a warm up. Like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> a- a- anyway. And from there, this person decided to get rid of their coach because this other dickhead has basically said, oh, three by three is too much volume. Now, what people don't realize, or what, when, when these things happen, 
it's like ask your coach especially if you're training with people and if these people happen to be coaches and they disagree with the program that's fine i mean we all do it like yeah. i'm sure ben writes a program for a client and then if i saw it i'd be like what the fuck is that and i'm sure if it was the other way around i wrote a program for a client and he looked at it, he's like what the fuck is that yeah. it's totally normal yes. as long as you can justify yes yeah why you've written this program and how mm -hmm. you're going to get to the end goal and yeah. they get to that end goal well you can't yeah. question yeah yeah because the result is what speaks right now yes when we talk about client loyalty it's like hey you've you're with this coach for a reason mm -hmm. the coach is probably going to give you the program or the exercises you need mm -hmm. not the exercises you want correct there are very very different especially in a powerlifting world there are so many different ways to like peak for for a one RM or for you know comp day, right? Mm -hmm. There's so many different ways to peak. There's different time lengths of peaking, different exercises, different set rep schemes, everything, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you have a particular way that you like to peak and you've got experience and you've done it before and blah, 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 blah. That's one thing. Going to a coach who has a different methodology to peaking. And wants to implement that methodology because that's what they think is best for you as the client doesn't mean just because you disagree and your ego gets in the way thinking that you know better you turn around and cancel with that coach that's just stupid yeah. yes have a, have a conversation try and see both sides and maybe come up with a happy medium yeah because at the same time the coach does need to be obviously attentive to the client mm -hmm. like as a coach, like it's my job to listen to you and say, hey, cool, you do have experience. You aren't new. You have valid points. Let's, yep. but I, I think that this may be better for you in this current circumstance. Mm -hmm. Let's meet somewhere in the middle. How does this sound? And then you, you go through it with the client because it's a team yep. thing. Yes. Um, but yeah, just so many c clients leave coaches because their egos get in the way. And it's just like, fucking, what's the point of getting that coach in the first place if you think you know better? Then go write your own program. Yeah. Go, go do your own shit. Like, mm -hmm. go, on, go on. Let's see how you go. You could be 100% right and you could do phenomenally well with what you know and your expertise. Or you could go horrendously bad and we can all sit there and be like, I told you so. Yeah. Like, I, I don't yeah. get it. Like, I don't understand. It's yeah, like the way, the way that we can like, you know, we can all sit there as coaches and sort of like attack each other and say, you know, this and that. This is why, you know, me and you will always, well, hey, we rip on each other fucking full time because it's great. But like when we when we see, you know, we'll always attack an idea, not a person. That is yeah. generally the principle 100%. I live by with stupidity. Yeah. I will I will always give the benefit of the doubt that you tried to understand something, you misunderstood it. I may have misunderstood it or something, but if I'm gonna if it's if it's blatantly wrong and you've you know you've come out fixing your position, um, like you know a lot of the coaches we've been, like a lot of the 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 statements we've been ripping on recently in the last couple of sort of episodes when these mindset coaches and fucking idiots sort of take over. Um, again, it's the idea that we're making fun of ripping and giving shit to, but if, if you're, if you're coming from that coach per se, or you come from that coach and you're still under them and you're trying to pick my brain, you're starting to ask me questions or you're starting to like, you know, test out the field. I'm going to say, Hey, go have these chats with your coach. Like go yeah. figure those things out because I'm not going to start being known for that guy that, you know, poaches or steals clients. But at the same time, you know, there's, there's a, there's a, a sort of loyalty is to, well, you signed up with that coach. Why are you asking questions in the first place? Yeah. Why? Why? Why are you looking around so much? Yeah. You know, if, if that coach has completely left you in the wind and you, you know, you've like haven't heard from them in eight weeks and you can't even cancel because they won't contact you to let you cancel. Great. Touch your card. Stop paying them. You know, separate entirely. From there, you know, oh, I need to have a plan. I need to have someone ready to go. I want to work with someone. All right, fantastic. Now we start chatting shop. But you don't go. It's to me, it's kind of ethically no different than like testing the waters while you got a bad relationship. Oh, you know, I was just sort of seeing what's out there and I'll message a few chicks or a few dudes and just sort of see what's going on in case I become single. It's like, that's yeah. still pretty shit. That's a pretty shit way to do it. Like it's a pretty shit thing to do because then I'm thinking that like, Hey, I'm helping, I'm, I'm helping someone who's potentially going to be a client or I didn't know you had a coach or like, you know, you're talking shit yeah. or if you've gone, Hey, you know, you come to me with a question about someone's programming. I'm like, Oh, that doesn't make sense to me, but you know, what's this for? Yeah. Like that isn't my way of saying, Hey, fuck that coach, get rid of them. Come to me. Yeah. But like it, that, that onus is on you as a client to be, well, like the loyalty to you should be, well, I've gone to that coach, given him my info and given him the scenario and he's, we've mapped this out. Yeah. That, that is the trust there. That's where you're supposed to be as a client. Like you're, the, the relationship is, is, is not mutually exclusive. It's a duality. It's an exchange of a partnership, right? We're going into yeah. an agreed partnership and a contract that, 
and something I I would trust that you abide by, something I abide by, is trying to include the client as much as possible in the process yeah. so they're buying. Like, yeah, 100%. We're trying to make sure that you're part of the team, part of the process and the, and the choice so that when it comes back to like, you know, say say a diet phase didn't work, say a cut phase didn't work, say a program didn't work, say a fucking peak didn't work in a, in a, a lift. Okay, neither of us at fault here because we both came to a conclusion like this made sense to me. You said like, you know, you contributed your info and said, look, this is about what I enjoy or previous data I've noted or something that I found in myself. Okay, we're including what you've suggested. We've given some exercise selection considerations that you like and we've picked out the format or the layout of the template or the exercise variations that I like. So together we've come up with this conclusion. You don't then take that and go, well, this coach is shit. Because like, you know, part of the parcel is that we're a team here. You're part of the process. Exactly. So you have buy-in. We've included you. You don't then take that and sort of go, well, I'm going to go speak to three different coaches online because I think this coach is shit. Yeah. Well, you know, what parts of the result can you take ownership of that you didn't do? Well, I didn't really train to one RAR when I should have. I didn't really train to true intensity when I was in the gym. I didn't mm-hmm. really train to my macros and my calories. I didn't really peek and back off my list as I said I should and I didn't do my deloads. It's like, okay, I, so I, I didn't follow the program. I didn't follow the program, <laughs> basically. So is the coach shit or was yeah. the simplicity of the program what you missed and you tried to overcomplicate it and you fucked it and then want to go run your mouth and tell people that, that, that the coach is wrong? Now, I'm not saying that no coach is ever not wrong because there's exactly. a, always Yeah, wrong. of course. We're human. Exactly. Like, you can't say that a coach can never be perfect. Like, there's Olympia-level coaches like yeah. Benny Cho and Hunter literally said, we yeah, missed I, the part. Yeah, the I fucked up. Yeah, yeah, I fucked literally up. Said, yeah. we, like, we missed the peak. We missed time his food or something the way that we went into the night show. We fucked it. Um, we're coming back next year. Yeah. Hunter, who's a fucking multi-million dollar athlete, is like top of the game, literally genetics potentially out the asshole, yeah. still got it wrong. Yeah. With his input as an elite athlete with Benny Cho. Yeah. So do you go, oh fuck this coach? I only go with someone who knows better but has no data on your body yeah. for the last for two weeks of the of the season. No, yeah. you go, okay, I'm gonna go with this person, stick it out. Now we've got data of what went wrong. Next time we have data of what goes right. Yeah. Like, and the thing is, if you're not happy with the end result, like when you get to the end result, then you can make it. You can make a decision, and you have some sort of, I guess, evidence or data to go back on. You can turn around and be like, "Hey, like, you know, I, I didn't peak as well, and I didn't obviously perform on the plat on the platform." Like, okay, cool, that's fair. You're a li- like you have more of a a reason to let go of that coach because well, you didn't perform. You didn't get the best out of yourself on that day and if that's the case then okay you know no harm no foul but to like you know cancel on your coach you know in any length of time prior to a comp or whether to whether it's a show you know six weeks eight weeks ten weeks it's like fucking really yeah like you're kidding like you're absolutely on crack surely if you if you think and this is the thing too is like you think that like you know let's take it from powerlifting to bodybuilding. If you think eight weeks out that you're going to a new coach is going to make any sort of differences, um, then I'm, I'm confused what you think is going to happen. Like yeah. there's a little, there's a bit you can do. Sure. You can dig a little deeper, but the only options you're going to have in that eight weeks is decrease more food, increase more drugs or add more cardio. That's yeah. the three options you have. You're not doing, you're not building more mass. You're not adding more size. You're not adding more complexity. You're not doing any of this other stuff. You're probably going to deload, brush off some fatigue, have a diet break, decrease calories, increase cardio, increase yeah. post. That's all you have as an option. To go from that and be like, oh, well, this coach doesn't go, has got it wrong. I'm going to change him. How the fuck do you know? You're eight yeah. weeks out. You literally can't yeah. do anything else at this point than kind of see it through and then yeah. go, oh, you know, we, we probably should have been more aggressive at the front end. Okay, that's now data that your coach has. Yeah. So whether you go to a new coach, you'll have to find that out. Whether you go to an old, uh, uh, the same coach, you've now got that data. Yeah. In your peak week, when people start thinking things like all these manipulated variables are important or like we've got to figure it out to a T, what's there to figure out? Keep your water the same, keep your sodium the same, balance out your potassium, keep your creatine in, yeah. eat foods that digest well, low carbohydrates based on the, uh, the, the refeed weekends you've had prior to that so that you know what it looks like to add food. Yeah. That's it. Like, there's, like it's, sure, there's like, like, you know, it's like people who decide to change coaches two weeks between shows because they decided to eat 2,000 grams of carbs to load up <laughs> at under 90 and then blame and then want to blame their coach. It's like, no, dickhead, you had 2,000 grams of carbs when you weren't meant to because you're not that fucking big brother. <laughs> Honestly, it, 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 it is that simple. Like, it's, yeah. it's like sometimes there's such over complexity and we're like, oh, well, we didn't get this result. 
it must be the coach. I'm going to swap coaches and something will change or fix yeah, it. Yeah, exactly right. They think that the changing of the coach is going to fix the problem. It's like, no, you're the problem, dickhead. Yeah, no, <laughs> no coach that you work with has the answer two weeks out from your show. There's yeah. going to be any different. It wasn't a peaking problem. Yeah. It was you didn't do the program and stick to the stick Yeah, to the yeah, plan. You, you didn't. Yeah, exactly right. You didn't do what you were meant to do. Exactly. And, like, and that's why yeah, you fucked up and look like shit I, or train like shit, compete like shit. I know. I... I I had to take ownership of this one day where I felt bad because I had a female approach me out from a natty show where, and, and to her credit, she sort of said like, this happened and I felt wrong. Or I felt like felt gross or blowed or what have you. Like, um, you know, we were just generally chatting back and forward about it because she went from having nothing but like clean foods or prep into having like a burger and chips and a drink, um, as a, as a load strategy the night before the show. And I was like, you know, how did you feel? How did you look? I guarantee these happened. She's like, yeah, that did happen. How did you know? I was like, because you introduced these things. That's literally what happened. Like, now, yeah. I wasn't talking about shit about that coach. I just said like that, that makes sense to me that that would be the outcome. I've mapped it out in my head. That's how you would look. And she's like, that's exactly what happened. I was like, no surprise at yeah. all. Yeah. But exactly from that, right. like I got carried away and being overexcited and giving away free info, which is what I do sometimes. Like I'll just get excited chatting about it. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. this makes more sense in a prep. Don't do that. Keep the food you've in, blah, blah, blah. Goes, does that. Wins like uh, whatever division it was she was doing. So like fucking yada, yada then proceeds to thank a coach. And I was like, but you just talked shit about your coach and tried to leave him. Like you yeah. were like, you were bad mouthing him to me looking for a new coach and like going to my advice behind his back anyway. So why the fuck are you still paying him? Yeah. Like what, why? Yeah, well, it's like, that. it's like in the professional setting. I think, what is it like in some of the Olympia, who was it? The, they had two coaches. I can't remember oh, who it was. Yeah. And they had two coaches, and, yeah, and she didn't tell either coach that she was being coached yeah, by the other one. Yeah, when they were, when they were both yeah. tagged or like whatever. Yeah, or, yeah, or so, no, like one I think was tagged and the other wasn't. The other one was like, but I've been coaching you, but like, oh, fuck, that's funny. Yeah, and anyway. like to me, that, that was the point where I was like, I actually, I don't want that reputation. I don't want to be that guy. Like that, I, I'm not going to talk shit about other coaches or talk shit about some ideas or principles or like that doesn't make sense to me. But also, I'm not going to say that I have the perfect idea because I don't. I have fucking yeah. no idea. Like in the grand yeah. scheme. Yeah, there's no point talking shit about coaches. But I mean, the only coaches you could even talk shit about are the ones that never get results, right? And I don't think they'd be coaches for too long if they're not getting consistent results. So exactly. that's, you know, that's a real like a non-issue. But it's more if you think you know better for yourself, don't get a coach in the first place. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Like if you just... think you know better, do your own shit. So simple, sorted. That way you're only accountable to yourself. And then the thing too is like, if you give someone your word, give them your word and mean it. Like yeah. uh, your word carries so much worth until it doesn't. And yeah, well, once you've given that, it that's and the pissed thing. on it. Yeah, that's the thing. No one's got that old school mentality anymore. Yeah. Like yeah, it's dead. Yeah. It's, it's to me, it'd be like me and me, me and Tom working together. And every single thing that I say to Tommy then goes, runs to you. And then you have yeah. to come to me and be like, oh, dude, like Tom's asking me about your programming. I'd be like, yeah. Cheers, bro. Tom, what the fuck? Like, oh, yes. work, yeah, all good. Yeah. Like, I'm like, have yeah. like, you give me your word. We're working together. So let's be on this. Or you know, something of that of that nature where you'd be like, well, I've given my end of the deal. I've held my word that I'll give my best foot forward for you at all times. Yeah. I'll cause harm. My intent is to not hurt you and get a result of a specific nature. If you don't like that, you'll probably find a mindset coach might see you, uh, someone of that nature who just wants to pat you on the back and say good job. But that's also not going to you. <laughs> but like, yeah. you know, nah. like you're you're, you're, fuck, you're You've given me your word as a client as I've given you my word as a business and a coach and a person of, of value that this is what I'm doing with you. Yeah. Let's stick to that until you vocalize to me that this is no longer what I want. And yeah. the thing is too, the thing that I don't get is because you know, it's happened to me a, a few times recently where um, like clients have just ghosted. Yeah. Like, yeah. I love I love my team. I love my clients. There's no favorites. There's no like, oh, you know, you got this or that. No, like every single one of you gets as much attention as I possibly can give you the best of my ability, which is why I'll cap my number so that I can maintain that professional connection until I get more coaches under me to handle more people because yeah. I don't want a hundred clients to one person where I can't give that level of connection. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Part exactly. of our team value yeah. is teamwork and community. Yeah. So to give you that level of respect and then just have like, you know, no word or like no, yeah. Like that's still to me loyalty. Like the loyal, like if you're done, if you're happy, if you got your result, you're sweet. Just fuck yeah, off, get rid of say me. it. Yeah, just 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 say it. Be like yeah, say ha just yeah, happy. Communicate. Yeah. Yeah. So then I know that that spot's open. That that income isn't coming in. That part of my like that my weekly admin isn't have to be worried about. Well, I can move on. It's not even that. It's just common courtesy. Well, yeah, which, courtesy, right? it's just which we know that's not very loyalty. common these days. Like common sense. It's not a yes. thing. Like you wouldn't have got me be like just deleted your account and be like oh we're not coaching anymore. 
Like yeah. that would have happened. You would have said, hey, bro, like, you know, I'm not liking the way this is heading. I'm not quite this way. Or perhaps, you know, you're unavailability to check-ins and you're not giving me data and stuff. Like I don't work that way. So we're not probably suited to each other. You would get an explanation as to why, hey, I think this is ceasing. I'm going to stop coaching you. System's done. See you later. Hope you're the best. Yeah. That's what you would get. But like in the same time, I kind of, you know, like the loyalty aspect is still giving that back to your coach. Yeah. If 100%. you do want to end it, be all, be honest about it. Just end it. Yeah, I look, I'm I'm with you, dude. It's just a funny sort of observation, and obviously we've seen it. It's just it reminded me of, like, why change coaches? And it's just funny. Like, I think about, like, my clients, like my client retentions. I think like nearly eighteen months, if not two years. It's like I have my mm-hmm. clients for a long time. I've been with Joe since twenty twenty. <laughs> Like I've been, I was with my coach before him, Ben Mack for like two and a half years, three years. Yep. So it's like, uh, and that's because I literally went from powerlifting to, you know, hypertrophy based training, bodybuilding esque type stuff. So like the two different coaches, it's like yeah. Joe can't do powerlifting and Ben can't really do bodybuilding. So I'm like, well, I'm going to find one that you know helps me with my goal. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, I, I don't understand chopping and changing coaches so often like yeah like why like the, the, that coach isn't going to have anything revolutionary right. that you know to be honest with you nothing revolutionary has come out for the last like fucking 20 years so it's like yeah. well shit like there's nothing that anyone else is going to be able to do for you it's just going to be able to get to the same end point differently yes that's all we really do we do the yep. same shit just yep. in different ways <laughs> legit we're just facilitating the same outcome in a way that's unique to us if it's unique at all yeah, and we try and make it as unique to you and as customized to you that you can do it. And it's like well, if you're you having, do. yeah, well, yeah, and if you're having the problem, voice it so that we can alternate or <laughs> yeah, we we can change things to better it suit you. And if, yeah, and if it doesn't work, well, then you know we're usually the first ones to say, you know what, I think what you're looking for, I can't help with. Yeah, but this person can, or you have to go yeah. elsewhere. And then that's when that conversation gets had. It's not hard. Yes. Yeah. I mean, same the same like inversely. Like I was with. Belt for oh fuck four years. The attempt of three preps, one actually yeah. executed. The attempt of four preps did myself, and then was like, you know what? It's your turn. Like yeah. I'm done. I'm done thinking. You're up. Yeah, literally. Let's just do this. Because yeah. I said like, you know, and I've said this. I said this when you know when Dalt sort of moved away from this realm and went in the way that in the direction he did. Um, power to him. I was like, you know, when we first started, I was like, I'm looking for someone who will be in my corner the entire yeah. time. Like yeah. you're not going to. Get someone to be like, yeah, maybe this week I want to bodybuild. Maybe this week I'll be powerlifting. Maybe next week I want to be surfing. Yeah, like this is what I want to do. Day this is in, day what I'm out. doing. Yeah, I'm building a team around me that facilitates that outcome. I don't care about literally anything else. Winning yeah. to me is the overall outcome. So I have a team around me that facilitates that win. Yeah, that can be this show this year. It can be the show ten years from now. It can be the fucking pro card down the track. I don't care. Point is, the outcome is to be achieved, and I need a team that people are going to do it. So how can I accrue data over over a career of time to know what to optimize and change and, and fucking fix? If I'm chopping and changing coaches every five minutes and they keep deleting my sheets or they keep yeah. changing, taking my stuff away or not, you know, go on the coach who doesn't even track that and then being like, well, all right, see, so yeah, this coach is shit. Well, yeah. how do I know the fucking shit? I didn't even do anything with them for more than six months. Yeah, yeah, exactly you right. You, realistically, yeah. you have one macro phase with a coach in six months. Yeah, it takes time for a coach as well to get the data or the necessary data from a client. Yeah. It can take up to like three to four months. Like, man, we got like one of my young cats who honestly, like, and, and power to him here, stuck with me. He was there from like day one we opened service, has been through hell with me because I've done everything in my power to find a way around him having to suffer because everything like his body does not respond to anything but extreme. So I'm like, cool. Yeah. I've had to go through ages of like, you know, gradual deficits, periodizing timeframes, diet breaks, maintenance phases, holding phases, condition solidification, aggressive cuts, aggressive ends of calorie intake to try and alleviate like diet, uh, uh, down regulation metabolism. At a certain point, it just basically got to a point where I was like, okay, this dude just has to suffer. Until we get him so lean that he responds in a better way, he just has to suffer to get the fat off. Yeah, it, oh. it doesn't. It doesn't matter who the coach was. You're no, going to look at the same outcome. The thing is, yeah, the thing is, you know that about your client because guess what? You've worked with your client for a period of time. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. Like you've tried. You've tried every other thing and it hasn't worked. Well, this is what works for you. Whatever the reason, this is what we do. It's like too bad. Yeah. You know, according to certain nutrition companies, you can't go below 800 calories because dangerous and disorder behavior. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Tell Chris Bumstead that. But anyway. Yeah, yeah bro. <laughs> Let's anyway. Move into questions, shall we? Let's do it. Um so what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? I actually put up best and worst training and nutrition advice, which is a fun one because drinking celery juice is, you know, really healthy. So that's always funny. Remember that celery juice 
craze days Fuck yeah. thing. Apparently, it was the miracle thing that did absolutely fuck all. Yes. Um, correct. Yeah. Yes. Those were the good times. <laughs> Drinking water instead of eating. So when people are hungry, so it's like, you know, when people get hungry and they're like, oh, I'm hungry. It's like, I just drink some water. My dad did that, to be honest. Yeah. In saying That's... that, I mean, in, he wasn't wrong in a sense. Like, I was always dehydrated, but yeah. it didn't help my hunger. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was... if you go through a deficit, then you have some fluids. Yeah, you're like it's always, it's never a bad option to to just drink water anyway. Maybe that that's your cue when you're hungry. Go drink some water because yeah. you need more water either you way. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Like let's turn this into a positive. Yeah. <laughs> um, it worked for me, so it'll work for you. Facts: a human body is equal to everyone. Yeah, I I, I do like that one. That's always a a fun one. Like you know. I got the result because I did it this way. So you'll get the result because it worked for yeah. me. Like, mm, no. That that sort of coach to me always has like, you know, they'll only share say 10 clients in their story. The rest aren't getting any results. Yeah. I have a hundred clients. I've got a hundred clients. I work with these people, this many yeah, people. But they, they show the same clients over they show and over. The same clients because that one system worked for them. Yeah. That's like a certain couple of certain coaches based in Queensland that just show the same <laughs> clients and claim that they've got all these clients. Like, yeah, sure, buddy. Um, a juice cleanse will cure my celiac. <laughs> nice. Good luck I that. mean, look, I'll pray for you, but I'm not sure that that's going to help at It'll all. Please just comprehend at all times that the liver and kidney have its jobs for a reason. Yeah. Like, the only thing that's funny, I, the only argument I ever have to, like, I guess the whole detoxing thing, right? It's like people, because people will be like, oh, you don't need to detox. You got a liver and kidney. Liver and kidneys. Like, no stress. I, I completely agree. However, if they're not functioning, yes, correct, yes, and if they're not in, in a good working manner, yeah, if you're abusing those fuckers, <laughs> then, then we need to probably look at maybe not necessarily like the whole detoxifying thing, but probably some form of supplementation to assist, yes, the kidneys and the liver. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the only you know the caveat to that. Um, don't eat garlic before training. I like that. I mean, that's... I brush my teeth with garlic dip. Does that count? Anti-inflammatory? Like, what's going on there? No, it's just a joke, I think. Because, yeah, garlic is the bomb. I fucking love garlic dip, bro. Every, I, I'm sure anyone listening that's ethnic knows what I mean. I, mean. I don't think there's a meal I've had in five years that hasn't had garlic in it outside of, like, sweet meals. Yeah, right? Even then, you just put some garlic on the side. Yeah, fuck it <laughs> Who doesn't like garlic chobani? 100%. It's just, it's the new flavor. <laughs> to be honest, it probably sell, let's be real. <laughs> Chibani protein yogurt, garlic flavor, hundred yeah, percent. It'll, it'll, it'll sell. <laughs> Your shit would be horrendous. I will be buying it. It's the only. <laughs> it's the only Chibani I buy because I don't eat Chibani. Off the shelves in Italy and fucking Greece, Greece, and like Middle East, like Turkey and yeah, shit. Hundred percent. Thing would take 100%. off. Business idea. No. <laughs> garlic, <laughs> garlic, garlic flavored yogurt. <laughs> um, that's all I've got for me. All right. What have I got? Uh, mm, 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 mm. All right. Pause versus no pause at top of rep. Yeah, I found out Scaff likes that one. <laughs> at the oh, at the it's not a pause. It's a reset. A it's difference. a reset. It's a reset. I don't like the whole constant tension thing. It's not a thing. Fuck off. <laughs> I've got. I've got. To, I mean, you have to go through my Instagram, but I've did do a post on constant tension and actually broke it down as to why it's potentially not as beneficial as most people think. Um, yeah. It's literally just intraset recovery, intra rep recovery. It's like if you can recover more efficiently for the next rep, you're going to get more quality reps out. It's point of cutting yourself. It's a point of cutting yourself short. If you can do ten reps, but you only get eight because you're doing constant tension, well, what's going to be probably better for you long term? Probably doing the tens. That's fair. Mm. definitely fair uh can you drink egg whites if you're too lazy to cook them i mean you can you can drink anything if you're too lazy to cook it it's yeah. just do you want to try and let me know <laughs> yeah like fucking uh what's his name re re record it and tag us yeah on I'll upload, upload your story and tag us 100 uh, is it was it rafa brent no it was a physique guy who was like blending uh his no martin Fritzwater blending his chicken just adds water right. and an orange well, it's like a it's dude, an orange hunter, hunter was doing it yeah, Hunter was doing it. Then Martin Fritzwater started doing it. Um, there was another classic guy doing it. Like, fuck off. Was it, yeah. Wasn't Martin training at Hunter's gym for ages? And that's why he was doing oh. it. And then they had, they had some falling out. I'm pretty sure it was probably. Martin. Don't but doubt anyway, it. Could, could be wrong. It's probably where they all got it from. 
hurts my soul. Like at that at that point, literally just move to like an easier food source. Like just eat food. Shut up. Just, yeah. Not having consistency within my diet. Um, uh, not having consistency in my diet, eating as much as possible, then forgetting to eat. So kind of like backloading, basically. Yeah, or front loading. Or front loading, yeah. <laughs> front loading shit, like, shit loading, then forgetting the rest. Which is I mean, it's ironic because I like I used to have this conversation like every single week at and and nutrition warehouse when I'd have customers come in like young mom or whatever with, with like a, a, an athletic growing son or he's trying to get big for footy. She eats all the time. It's like the classic cliche is on generation I feel like talk about. It. It's like yeah, yeah. I mean they're like, oh he, he eats everything, he's everything in sight. It's like really? How often does he do that? Oh, we'll have sandwiches and then we'll have cereal, and then we'll have some bananas, and then he's done. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then for the rest of the day, uh, well, he's pretty full. All right, so that's not a surplus. That's not an intake of food. He's just done like a bolus of calories and gone, sweet, now I'm full and satisfied. We also know that auto-regulation is a thing, so if you aren't keeping constant awareness of it, your body's going to go, well, I had a large intake of food based on hunger this day. The next day or two, I'm pretty sweet. I don't need the fuel. I'm going to come down. And then you're not actually eating that much. So, you know, being that discipline is obviously important to consistency in bodybuilding. Um, yeah, being aware of your food intake is pretty important so that we can obviously maintain what we're trying to eat or maintain our level of calories. Yeah, I mean, that's always going to be the thing. And it's it's an interesting one because then we always have the hot topic of like how far in a surplus do you need to be and, mm -hmm. you know, blah, 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 blah. But it's like as you start to gain tissue, whether you gain, well, even not even tissue, as you start to gain weight, your maintenance changes because yeah. – you're putting on body weight so your maintenance keeps climbing so you do in theory need to keep escalating calories mm -hmm. now when you need to ask, escalate calories by how much it's not usually much you know what they say was it like five percent over maintenance mm -hmm. but because you keep getting new maintenance <laughs> you have to keep escalating five percent yes <laughs> so yeah it's a funny one because people are like well you, you can literally keep them in one calorie like I keep them at one calorie balance for their entire surplus. And it's like, yeah, you can, but it needs to be pretty high. And the only problem is they're going to end up getting, or they're going to get fatter faster, which yes. then takes them out of the growth phase sooner, which is yes. not ideal if you're trying to build tissue. Correct. Anyway. I agree. Um, mm. Oh, for all the podcasts, took too long to put the question box. Uh, mm. Do you guys use different rep schemes or would, would they be beneficial? It was um, Mark Carroll's rep prescription examples like constant rep range, set loading ranges, descending reps, descending reps, skewed pyramid, pyramid stage, uh, weight load, blah, 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 blah. So he is a proponent of that or not a proponent of that? Um, or is he just he a general is. question? Yeah, okay. So, so do we use them as well? No, I don't do pyramid sets i've done them don't get me wrong yeah. i don't do drop sets i've done yeah. them um, yeah. but no that i like to set rep schemes based on one goal of client mm -hmm. so it's like obviously that'll come first and that'll determine where the effort goes into like particular body parts or particular movements mm -hmm. um and then from there i would put in like a higher rep scheme for either muscles that seem to adapt better to mm -hmm. a higher rep scheme mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't mean that in the next phase it, i don't change it because right? i yeah. usually do it's like don't get me wrong i've done heavy sets of calf raises because yeah they're calf raises like usually everyone's like no you need to do like all the sets all the reps you know fucking 10 times a, 10 times a week and all this sort of shit and it's kind of like eh, well it's like any other muscle yes. get strong in all your rep ranges yes um and the thing is getting strong in all your rep ranges just means you need to phase it and phasing it, you know, can be over a 12 month period and you might do six months of just like high reps on, you know, isolation work and low reps on compounds. And then you might mm -hmm. switch it and do fucking high reps on isolation exercises and do mm -hmm. like, you know, sorry, low reps on isolations and high reps on compounds, like yeah. mix it up, get strong across yeah. the board and guess what? You'll grow. Yeah. And I'll do like, I'll generally apply a very similar metric or premise. Like for, for me, I often find that if I want someone to get strong, the main pro probably two to three first exercise I've mapped out are the ones that I'm strong in. So yeah. they're going to be a six to eights or eight to tens or maybe six to twelves, whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. And then we're looking at things like, you know, the way the rear delt works and pulls. We know the way that the your back works and stuff like that. We're getting higher pro uh, propensity to rep targets because that's what they need to grow or stimulate yeah. or feel or contract. I'm not doing or not feeling a very good uh, rear delt cable pull at six reps. Yeah. It's going to be fucking too hard. It's going to feel like shit. Yeah. I'm going to fail. It's not going to be good. 20 or 15 to 20, where I know that that high yield is activating more muscle fiber and I can kind of get that greater stimulus. I'm going to look at that and go, okay, I can get a better quality of rep up until about that failure point. 
So I'm going to feel 15 reps better and control it until about that 17 to 18 yeah. mark. So why not do that? So yeah. still a premise, the back end of the program, it's probably going to yield higher reps on more isolation uh, accessory work. And yeah, the thing is with the higher rep work, it doesn't mean you don't increase weight or reps, whether it be the following week, following fortnight, exactly. or whatever your progression schemes in place. It's like if you have 15 reps and that 15 reps is, you know, RIR1, cool, perfect. Then, you know, you try and do 16 reps the next week, 17 reps, exactly. 18 reps, and whatever your upper end of a rep target is, let's say it's 15 to 20, you hit 20 reps, perfect. Up the weight, go back to yes. 15. Like you pick the next weight that keeps yeah. you at 15 for one RIR. I mean, that's be easier. Yeah. And that's how it, like you just wave load that all the way through. And that's why it's like a lot of, I guess, intermediate to experienced lifters, whether it be bodybuilding, powerlifting, whatever it is, don't really rotate many of their compound lifts. They keep them the same because mm -hmm. they can continually progress them for a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. And it's just really like when clients are like, oh, I'm bored of this exercise, but it's like, there's not many other exercises that are going to yield the results or the benefits that we want for that yep. particular movement pattern. It's like, hey, we're just going to have to bite the bullet and we might just need to change the sets and reps. We might move it to a top set and back off. We might yep. move to just two sets only. We might move to fucking five sets and go a ton of volume just because you're weird. Like, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> fuck, like, I don't, I don't know. Like, you know, we have so many options yeah. for, for adherence from a client. Um, it's like for me, like I know I can run my current block. I can run that for 12 months if I wanted to, like no problems. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, yeah. In and out. I can, I know I can progress it where I need to progress it. I know I can add mm -hmm. reps and sets where I need to do it. And I can manipulate it to build body parts that I want to build, blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah. I can do it all. Like it's easy. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. It's just, it's yeah. As, as complex as things can be, it's also as simple as it can be. Like you don't, you don't need to have the most advanced rep scheme system to get a result. If you are, if you've increased, like, let's say we know your set markers for your chest didn't grow very well at 14. Okay, let's go to 16 to 18 of this block. Maybe you run that and titrate that by the end of the block and see what it feels like at 20 sets. Your recovery still fine. Cool, you got fucking 20 sets. Um, you know, I'd ask how effectively you're training, but, you know, you got 20 sets on a muscle group and you're fucking sending it. Great. You modify the rep ranges in that. Maybe you want higher volume or maybe you want a fucking strength phase in there as well and you've got, like, six to eights, whatever. Like, there's only so much that you need to change. And the progression just come from increasing your reps and your weight. Did you max yeah. out the rep target? Cool. Increase the weight. Drop back the rep target. Uh, one of my girls had, you know, a problem with like I can't, I can't get past, 50, um, I can't get to the seventeens um, in this in this uh, in this block, but I'm getting to the to the um, back end of my rep target for the fifteens. Like, okay, cool. Uh, drop to the seventeens and hit your six. It was, like, it was like six to eight or six to 10, whatever it was. Literally that next week, 17.5 on the dumbbell press, mm -hmm. gets six, then gets mm -hmm. seven, then gets eight. I'm like, cool, that's that's it. You've, there's no like master technique here other than just keep the same form, standardize your reps, yeah. progress when necessary, or like, i.e. weight or reps. And if we're increasing total set volume because like I want to see where your MRV is, cool, we'll keep doing that. But yeah. for this, I think it was like three sets at six to eight because I'm like, I want to get your shoulders fucking strong because they're weak. Mm -hmm. Let's get them strong. Jack them up. Yeah. Went to 15s. I can't get past 15s at this rep target. Okay, cool. There's no reason you can't go back. You increase to 17.5, drop back to six. Yeah. 100%. Oh, yeah, I can do that. And now you go like, seven, now you go eight, now you go to 20. Now you go six, seven, eight, 22. Yeah. That's it. Micro progressions. You can do that for fucking 10 months. Yeah. That 100%. Like, will yield a 40 kilo increase on that lift thereabouts. Mm -hmm. At a certain point, you probably you'll probably stall. Cool, we changed up a little bit. Might yeah. move to a machine or something like that because you can like you won't be able to get it up yourself. Whatever, but like it really just becomes that simple. Like it, yeah. you know, it's it's one thing to say like yeah, I go up in pyramids and five by fives, the top set this and back off, blah blah. You have that same argument we do bro chat with Fuad and the guys. Like you, you see you see them talk about like they they argue semantics about volume and Fuad's like oh well I do like. 30 sets in a workout, but then it turns out he's counting his warm up and build up sets. Yeah, it's like exactly. okay, so instead of for most people that's smart. You don't do 10 reps at two weight, two sets before your top set. You might just start backing off. Like for me, it's always as I get closer to my working set, the rep range backs off as I'm warming up. I'm just sort of making sure it feels good. Then I'll get to my working set. Yeah. I mean, it's just a really old mentality on his behalf. It's just an old school way of training, which again, it's, I guess, in a sense, standardized for him, right? So it's like, as long exactly. as he's aware of it and he can do it, then the the actual language used I mean, it's tricky because it's a podcast, so it's like you do want to get the language correct. However, yes. mm -hmm. um, what he's trying to portray and then what actually is a very, are two very different things. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I'm not 
I'm not mad at that oh, to no. be honest. But it's like, yeah, I, I do, I do get it. It's kind of like, eh, warm up sets don't actually count because there's no really effective stimulus. And if you're taking warm up sets that close mm-hmm. to proximity to failure, well, then they're not warm up sets; they're working sets. Yep. <laughs> but anyway, and that is it from me. Beautiful, because I do have a call coming up, so that timed beautifully well. I like that. Isn't it beautiful um, when it comes together? Man, it's always nice. Uh, any quick news things we need to know, Bar, now that you've got your app up, well, close to up and running? Um, nope. Tommy is taking clients. I'm still taking clients. If you are looking for, um, you know, looking for a coach, looking for a system, looking for an option, you know, we're not going to talk to you about the coaches. Come see us. <laughs> I will. That's fine. I will. Fuck those guys. Fine. No, I'm kidding. Um, no, just that. Fuck you, uh, people. Uh, Tommy, Tommy's on the system now. We're getting going. Uh, we've got posing workshops and stuff for the week coming up. Um, Michael is about to get to season A. He's looking fucking unreal. Yeah. Team's getting ready for season B. Um, and yeah, we've got the app coming out. And um, keep an eye out for our... We're moving back to our monthly articles. Keep an eye out for that as we're doing a, a six-month series on basically the foundations of bodybuilding and looking mm-hmm. like, you know, how we start from the interest of bodybuilding to the blood paneling to start your workload, to know where the base markers are, what we're moving through mm-hmm. and basically get on stage. So keep an eye for that. I love it. I love it. I haven't got much going on. You want me to coach you? Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Fuck it. <laughs> I'm really bad at putting up. I'm waiting. I actually do have my um landing page being redone because I moved systems and my landing page obviously was on the old system. So I've got someone creating it to have all my links again, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. So if you want to actually do get coaching, just DM me, please. Or use the shitty link that's in my Instagram story, at the, uh, Instagram post, <laughs> Instagram post profile at the moment, which is just a Google form. Scaff's died. He's played golf. Um, I only had a lesson today. I'm just tired because I got up early and trained. I trained legs. You know what it's like after legs. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, at least the pump's still not. The, it's gone down. We're good. <laughs> I, can, I, I can walk. I can sit now. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I'm scared to stand up, but we'll see how we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys All right, and guys. girls, as always, thanks for tuning in. Any questions, concerns, always message us or mostly just message Ben. Um, have a great weekend because that's when this will come out. Be, be good. Be safe. Goodbye. See you guys.